Hey fam, how's it going? I just wanted to do a little bit of a check-in now that we're halfway through Halloweenathon 2021. That's right, we are halfway to Halloween, baby. Oof, I love Halloween. Anyway, so <laughs> I am on book three, so I got a couple of stories to talk about, although I did cheat because book two is a prequel and it's, the, it's it was just 104 pages, but I'm I'm about to also devour book one, so fuck it. <laughs> curiouser and curiouser. So first and foremost, we're going to start with Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Penbro. Oh my goodness gracious, look at all that shit. Oh wow, what are my general things? From the get-go, I have so many questions. All right, I really enjoyed the pacing, how the timeline unfolds and everything in this story. I really, really enjoyed that shit. I had difficulty putting both of these stories down, seriously. I just devoured them. Um, so yeah, I have, I, I, I get the hype now. There was something, <laughs> we're all hanging out recently in someone's channel and folks began making a connection from that Netflix series to another Netflix thing. I'm not going to say what it was because in that moment I was like, la, 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 la. not so much because I was trying to avoid spoilers because I don't think it was really spoilerific, but I didn't want to hear that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It involved a kid. Eh? I don't want to hear that shit. So yeah, know that there's, there's your trigger warning for this book. There is shit involving kittens. It's not very nice. And I hate that shit myself. So I can't let you go and not be warned about that. Cause that shit fucking sucks. I don't know how many things I can watch, you know, with people dying and shit, but it's always going to be the animals where I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Which is fucked. I know. But to be fair, when you're always watching horror and shit, I think that the reason why some of us can eat spaghetti at the same time is because we know it's not real. We know it's prosthetics. We freaking Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell taught us what they use for blood. You know what I mean? So there's that disconnect that's able to be there because we get that it's Hollywood, right? Or indie flick, whatever the fuck, like we get it versus, you know, what you gotta fuck with the animals for it. And I really think that writers and directors and shit using that shit, I feel like that's right up there with jump scares for low hanging fruit and horror. You got nothing else to do to be able to elicit these emotions from me. <laughs> there are times where I feel like she gives us a glimpse of the formula and it's like, Haha, so don't take it too seriously. <laughs> I know some people don't like it, but that's okay. We're allowed to have different opinions. I love the shit out of this and the series. There were a couple of embellishments that they went with, with the series, but I'm not mad about it. There's one element that I feel Sarah played very well in the story that the Netflix series kind of, and I was like, what's the point of that? I don't, I don't get that. But at the same time, I can't think of how better to represent that shit. What the fuck? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So until I can figure that out, I guess I'll just shut up. <laughs> and the second book was Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant. And that synopsis, <laughs> Atagardis, 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 there's no R in that, Atagardis, Atagardis. I decided to go with a blending of Atari and Atlantis officially and how to pronounce this fucking word for this damn ship. I want to say that in book one and the synopsis for book one, they make a reference to this shit. So this is a story of what went down with the shit you hear references of in Into the Drowning Deep. And I'm the type of like viewer, reader, whatever, where I really like to go all the way back to the beginning and just work my way through, right? And I, at this point, have no freaking regrets. I devoured, I devoured this freaking story. This is mermaids with motherfucking teeth, fam. So that was fun. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say because it's only a, like, I read it in the Kindle app on my phone and I have a tendency like, 
if it's bad for our eyes to read on our devices with the black background and the white text, I'm just gonna shrink that text even more. Really getting it. <laughs> Fuck my eyes. I already have astigmatism. So the way, I feel like I cheated by doing a, a story for book two is read a horror book with a monster, right, right? Basically, um, and I feel like I cheated a bit, but really I just immediately bought into The Drowning Deep, and so yeah. That's one of two books I'm gonna have difficulty not like <sighs> jumping the line with that shit because there's so much that I wanna read like right now and I wish I could just willow that shit and just absorb it all. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I'm in the middle of The Only Good Indians. That's my book three pick. And uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. Although I, <sighs> goddamn animals. There's just, listen, we we just, the kite, our own kite. And I was the one who had to like, you know, it was. <sighs> so all of this shit, with animals lately is really starting to work on my last nerve, but at the same time, it's like, Amy, you knew what you were getting yourself into with this one, so you're just a masochist, but whatever. <laughs> Clearly, I like that shit. <laughs> so um, other than that, it's a bit of a hit to the gut sometimes because it's like too soon, too soon, but I did it to myself, so I guess I'm not complaining, whatever. And uh, this is my first Stephen Graham Jones, so he, he and <laughs> I seriously tried to like keep these in the package and do the like haul thing or whatever. Fuck that shit. Cause then it's like, what if they're getting bent in there? Oh my God. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this book and I've, it's been on my TBR. I've always been curious about them more. So is just like the hobby kind of shit. Cause you know, I like my ghost shit. Um, but I blame David for finally, like I was like, I, okay, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a nice little logical guy and stuff, you know, and they're but like, he just like, I, I had to get it. I had to get it. I don't know when the fuck I'm going to read it, but now I own it. And then I, while I was doing that to myself, I noticed that, um, someone has a new book out and it was ready to actually like, I pre-ordered it, but it was like two days before it actually went out. And that's the beautiful ones by Celia Moreno. Garcia. I loved Mexican Gothic. I still love Mexican Gothic. I don't know why I put that in the past tense. Um, I'm really excited about this. Oh my God. Um, this one, this cover is so pretty. And the next book cover, oh, the fuck is that a Doberman? Oh my goodness. That's so cute. Oh, I love Doberman. So those little bastards. They are the beautiful ones. The sales. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I apologize. I'm sorry. Most notable socialites. And this spring is Nina's chance to join their ranks, courtesy of her well-connected cousin and his calculating wife. But the grand season has just begun. And already Nina's debut has gone disastrously awry. She has always struggled to control her telekinesis. Neighbors call her the Witch of Old House and the haphazard manifestations of her powers make her the subject of malicious gossip. This hair can burn. Um, <laughs> excuse me, pardon me. <laughs> when entertainer Hector Overy arrives to town, Nina is dazzled. A telekinetic like her, he has traveled the world performing his talents for admiring audiences. He sees Nina not as a witch, but ripe with potential to master her power under his tutelage. With Hector's help, Nina's talent blossoms, as does her love for him. But great romances are for fairy tales. And Hector is hiding a truth from Nina and himself that threatens to end their courtship before it truly, before it truly begins, motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> And that's my catch up for this point in half a -thon 2021. Again, thank you to the Spinebreakers for lighting this shit up and to Alex 
over at the bookcubus for introducing me to them and this and her and I have caught up on how we're doing this year. How are you doing? What books are you reading? What are you in the middle of right now for Halloween at on 2021? If you've even joined in on it, you don't have to. You can do your own thing. I don't mind, but I still am curious about what you're reading. I've been playing catch up on everybody's videos because I was like, first I had a migraine and then I was just like, books. <laughs> you know how that goes? <laughs> Today's artist spotlight is Jamie Wells. I love her. I s still think she's a bit of a mythical being because I have never known anyone to manipulate watercolor the way this woman does. So whatever, I think it's very kind of her to come hang out with us mere mortals and shit. We uh, originally met on Twitch. She is one of the kindest people I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. And yeah, seriously, check her out. I have a link down to her website. She does have prints available for ordering. She does stream on Twitch. She's seriously one of my favorite people on earth. You need to check out her work. Her work is incredible. She is Visual Jamie on Twitch TV. That is twitch.tv slash Visual Jamie. And her website is visualjamie.com. That's J-A-M-I-E. Enjoy. Be nice, because she's incredible. And uh, you've been informing me of some great ghost stories, and I love it. Oh my God, I have so much going on in my head right now. Holy fucking shit, oh my goodness gracious. I have decided on what we're gonna talk about in, in the next ghostly story time. We're leaving Washington State. The clue is we're gonna go and play in Pennsylvania. Now, American ghost stories a lot of times have a tendency to take place in Pennsylvania, which makes sense, right? Fucking war and shit. Um, not that I wanna downplay <laughs> that but I think my brain kind of needs me to a little bit right now thank you <laughs> but I'm not talking about that area oh no fan. this this town has been just taking up place in my brain for a very long time now us gamer fans will know exactly what town I'm talking about. There's your second clue. I wasn't gonna give a second clue, but I guess I fucking did. We'll see if I follow through in the editing, huh? <laughs> Please take care. I'll try to as well.